Hey guys, here is the video on awk for testing. So we've been kind of building up to this, talking about things like conductivity, hydraulic conductivity, uh, transmissivity, and storativity. And these are all properties of our aquifer, right? How well it'll transmit water, how much water will be released from storage. And the best way to, to determine these properties is to go run an aquifer test. And so an aquifer test basically consists on pumping on a well for a sustained period uh, at a constant rate and then measuring the flow rate at which we're pumping and also measuring the drawdown in that well. So let me draw that really quick. So here's our well in the middle here. We're going to call that our pumping well and I'll make that PW. And it is completed or it is screened within our confined aquifer setting here. So again, we have our two confining beds below and above. And then we have our aquifer here. And then remember, we have our potentiometric surface up here. Uh, and because this is a, a confined condition, our potentiometric surface rises above our, our actual water level here, right? And that should be review for you. So the first thing to notice is that this well is screened throughout the entire aquifer thickness. That's what we call fully penetrating wells. If it was not screened across the, the entire thickness, that would be called partially penetrating. So that's kind of the first thing to notice here. But anyway, so when we pump on this well, we measure things like the flow rate, which we'll call Q. So the flow rate coming out of the well, the volume of water per time. So we'll say, how about gallons per minute? Or we could do maybe cubic feet per day. And then we measure the drawdown. So if you remember, if we pump on a well, we're going to lower this potentiometric surface, right? We're going to lower the hydraulic head to some degree. And that's called our drawdown. And we'll call that S, little s, not to be confused with our big S storativity there. And so if you remember, when we pump on a well, we draw water through the aquifer in sort of a horizontal sense. And we're making an, an assumption here that our aquifer is um, homogeneous. So it's kind of just a big bathtub full of sand. Um, that's never the case in nature or very rarely is the case. Typically you'll have uh, varying permeabilities in, our, in your aquifer and we call that heterogeneity. Heterogeneity means that, you know, as you go out in your aquifer, you're going to have varying permeabilities, right? You're going to have um, different depositional units, maybe a paleo channel, maybe layers of clay. In this case, we're saying it's homogeneous. So if you remember, when we pump on this well, we create what's called a cone of depression, which looks something like, let me get rid of some of that stuff, like that, right? And so we're pumping on our well, we create this cone of depression, right? And we can measure that at what we have out here, which are called observation wells. So we have drawdown over here, Draw down over here, draw down over here. I'm call these OW1, OW2, OW3, and our pumping well in the middle there. Okay, so let's get into a little more detail here. So we said we're going to be pumping on this well for sustained duration at a constant flow rate, Q. And then we're going to be measuring drawdown in this well and also our observation wells. So what does that look like? So as we go through our test, we're going to have different levels of drawdown, right? As we move forward in time in our test, the drawdown in our well is going to increase. So at T0, so before we start our test, our, our potentiometric surface is our static, right? We haven't made any drawdown. We haven't drawn down the potentiometric surface at all. Let's say one minute into our test, we draw down to here. So that's our first time step. We'll call it T1. And let's say at T1 <clears throat> we've drawn down our well or the potentiometric surface um, five feet. Let's say 10 minutes into our test at T10 we've drawn it down 
let's say, how about seven feet? And let's say, um, and let me draw that too. So that's T10, so 10 minutes into our test, we've drawn it down seven feet. And let's say 100 minutes into our test, we've drawn it down, let's say, nine feet. So that's our T100. So the drawdown is increasing over time, right? Do we see that? And so we can plot these data up, and it'll look something like this. So we'll have time on the x-axis in minutes. So we'll have T0 here. We'll have T1. And we'll do a, a, a logarithmic scale down here, okay? So we'll have one log scale there, one, a base 10. Second log scale here, and I'm going to clean this up because this is not working out. Let me redo this. So T, so T0, T1, one minute, 10 minutes, and then 100 minutes. That's our logarithmic scale. And our y-axis will have drawdown, right? So we'll have zero feet of drawdown there. We'll have, um, let's do five feet of drawdown there. And again, I'm getting a little sloppy here, so let me remake this. S, zero, five, and we'll do um, 10 right there. So we can plot these data points on this graph here. And what does that look like? So at T0, we have zero drawdown, right? So that's that point. At T1, one minute into our test, we said we had five feet of drawdown. So that's right there. One minute, five feet of drawdown. And then at T10, we said we had seven feet of drawdown. So maybe that's right there. And then at T100, we said we had nine feet of drawdown, which is like right there about, okay? So we're plotting up these, these drawdown data over time. So what we end up with is what we call a drawdown curve. So these data plotted up on our chart here, this is crucial to determine our aquifer properties like transmissivity. So this is kind of the basic data collection of an aquifer test. This is what we're going for. We're trying to figure out the drawdown over time at a, at a certain pumping rate. And this is crucial too, we need to know our pumping rate um, throughout our test. So here's what a, uh, a drawdown curve looks like in real life. So we have our log logarithmic scale and time here. So we can see that the drawdown is changing over time, right? So very, very, very early in our test, we have a lot of drawdown. So over, let's see, over this log scale, these fractions of a minute here. This is our drawdown. We've drawn it down about three, four, about three and a half feet, something like that, over this this very short amount of time. You know, a hundredths of a minute to a tenth of a tenth of a minute. We've drawn it down that much. Over the next time step, a tenth of a minute to one minute, we've drawn it down, let's see six to 10, so four feet. So from our one minute time step to our 10 minute time step, we've drawn it down, let's see, that's nine to about maybe 11. So two feet over 10 minutes, over nine minutes. So as you can see, and then the ne next time, time step there, 10 minutes to, um, what is that, 40, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, something like that. We've drawn it down, you know, about a foot. So the drawdown is decreasing over time, okay? So let's kind of look at what um, the drawdown looks like in our aquifer over time. So at T1, we're right there, right? So T1, we've drawn it down that much. At T2, I guess it would be T, let's see, T10, We've drawn it down that, whoops, we've drawn it down that much. And then at T3, we're down here, right? So the drawdown increases over time in this example.
So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to get a little more into this drawdown curve and show you what changes in the drawdown curve over time mean for our aquifer system. Um, anyway, that will be the boundary conditions video, um, which I'll make probably, oh, maybe in a couple days here. We'll see. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Um, I hope it makes sense. If it doesn't, make, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. And we'll see you in the next one.